An American volunteer veteran who fought in the wars in Iraq, Afghanistan and Ukraine said that the difference between expectations from previous military experience and the reality that U.S. Marine Corps sniper and International Legion volunteer Matthew Sampson faced in the war in Ukraine is quite significant. The first is the differences between the two armies, which were in terms of resources compared to what the U.S. military is used to. The U.S. military has a lot of resources and experience with logistics, but it also has to do with the fact that we have the money to have these resources. I quickly realized that Ukraine is doing everything it can in very difficult conditions. It's just that the situation is bad and Ukraine does not have the capacity to provide enough of everything that is needed. You need weapons, ammunition. And this is what President Zelensky constantly talks about. He clearly emphasizes just send weapons and ammunition. We will fight ourselves. Give us the tools so that we can fight this fight, Samson said. The second is the big difference in the fighting and tactics of war in Ukraine compared to Iraq and Afghanistan. The fighting in Bakhmut, Donetsk Oblast, in which the American volunteer took part, reminded him of the battle for Stalingrad during World War II. There were simply no such battles in Iraq and Afghanistan. Even if you look at the examples of the Marines who participated in clearing places like Fallujah city of Iraq, they cleared every room and building in that huge place. But the enemy did not have tanks, artillery or aircraft. The enemy had improvised explosive devices, Kalashnikov assault rifles, but there was no regular army. The battles in Bakhmut were completely different. We were attacked by tanks, helicopters, artillery, he said. Most of the fighting in Ukraine is with trenches, drones and artillery. In Iraq and Afghanistan, there were no trenches at all because they are simply not needed there. American forces and NATO controlled everything that was happening in the air. Most of our major operations were conducted at night because the enemy did not have significant thermal imaging capabilities. We all had night vision devices. When I came here, I saw that almost no one had such night vision devices. At that time, the enemy sometimes had thermal imaging devices which made night operations too dangerous. This is completely different from the Western doctrine, according to which they try to do more at night. The American volunteer veteran explained, some of the tactics the US military used in Iraq and Afghanistan simply don't work in Ukraine, even though they are supposed to work for this war. This is a completely different battlefield, he stressed. China on Wednesday sent a new Earth observation satellite into space from the Jiuquan Satellite Launch Center in northwest China. The Gaofen 1205 satellite was launched at 7.45 a.m., Beijing time, aboard a Long March for sea carrier rocket and entered the planned orbit successfully. It will be used in a variety of fields including land surveys, urban planning, road network design, crop yield estimation and disaster relief. The launch marked the 540th flight mission of the Long March Carrier Rocket Series. China conducted its Joint Sword 2024B military exercise on Monday near Taiwan, sparking fresh tensions in the region. The drills have drawn strong criticism from both Taiwan and its international allies. Jeff Liu, spokesperson for Taiwan's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, condemned the military maneuvers. China's actions once again challenge the rules-based international order and seriously undermine regional peace and stability he said during a briefing on Tuesday. Su Tsuyun, an analyst from Taiwan's Institute for National Defense and Security, weighed in on the implications of China's latest actions. 
The Beijing government's intimidation has always been 70% political and 30% military action, Su said. China's two joint sword AB exercises are not solely focused on Taiwan. They also serve as a statement to democratic countries, particularly the United States and Japan. Su added that he believed China's military ambitions go beyond its long-standing aim of unifying Taiwan with the mainland. The real strategic objective, he argued, is for China to transition from a land-based power to a maritime one. The Chinese Navy has changed from Greenwater Navy Navy to Blue Water Navy, and Taiwan is in an important location. All China wants is to control the oceans adjacent to it, Su explained. As regional tensions rise, Taiwan's government continues to build its military defenses and solidify ties with international partners, particularly the United States and Japan, in the face of China's escalating military posturing.